Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets and Quan. Back again for Fridays with Sandy. That would be Sandy Kreisberg. Hey, hi, everybody. Happy Friday. From Boston, we have a really incredible candidate uh, with some jumbo scores uh, and a great guy. He's in the U.S. Army. He is a pilot of an Apache attack helicopter. He's got a 760 GMAT and a 3.89 GPA from West Point. Can't get better than that. Yeah. He's been in the Army for seven years. In fact, he deploys in 30 days uh, to Korea. And he's been a commander uh, of uh, a, a group of soldiers in the U.S. Army. His uh, goal, we're, we're looking at Harvard, Wharton, Stanford, Columbia, MIT, and Chicago Booth, really, you know, some of the finest schools in the world. Uh, and I'm assuming you're going to use that uh, MBA to transition to the civilian world where he would love to work for McKinsey. Um, Sandy, that's what that's do you think? Choice. James wants a, a mock interview, and I think that's good, uh, a good suggestion on his part. These are very powerful stats. Uh, the age 32 is a little on the older side. That'll get a lot of that's explained by uh, military uh, background, but you're going to have to, uh, you, that may come up. Uh, so I think he's a powerful applicant. Let's, let's just get right into the mock interview. The first question they often ask a guy like you is, you know, hi, hello there. Could, could, could you tell me about your decision to go to the uh, uh, West Point? I wanted to uh, serve my country. So is the bottom line. So I was, uh, I was there, um, I'm from originally from New Jersey, and I have lots of family members around the New York City area. So when 9-11 hit, uh, I had a lot of family members who were affected by that. Um, and that drove a lot of decision making to serve in the military. And West Point was a great way to do that and become an officer. What do you think, John? I, will, I would say the other thing I would say is, uh, and West Point is one of, the, one of the world's best place to get an education. Uh, you know, it has a lot of academic cred. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're not, you're not helping. Okay. <laughs> the, the, way, the way to structure that answer is th there are several reasons. What, what they want to know is how you found out about it, how you investigated, how you made the decision. Okay. Now, you, you had a high-minded motivation. You go, well, uh, there were several reasons why I wanted to attend West Point. Uh, and then you should go through whether you visited, whether you have friends or family, whether uh, you go. One thing was uh, I was in high school during 9-11, so that got me interested in service. I began to investigate what going to West Point was like. See if you can answer it that way. Tell me about your decision to go to West Point. Well, there were several reasons why I decided to go to West Point. Um, one of them, a uh, major one was while I was in school, 9-11 uh, happened. And being originally from New Jersey, uh, I have lots of family members who work in New York City, and they were directly affected by the event. Um, and seeing uh, the devastation that happened, uh, I had a strong desire to serve my country in some capacity. Um, and being an officer was a, was a way that I could give back to my, to my country. And West Point was a great place to become an, an officer to do that. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. also had a family. Blah, blah, blah. You're, you're still making that first point, and you're beginning to sound okay. scripted. Okay. Look, dude, I'm not... I'm not questioning your motives. I'm just questioning. Uh, um, I'm telling you, it's not coming across in an HBS way. Okay. I did have a fan. I do have also a friend of mine who also did go to West Point. He's a couple of years ahead of me. And uh, when I was investigating what schools to go to, he came back and uh, told me to look at West Point as an option. So that's what I did. I looked at West Point and it seemed like the, the rigor, uh, academic. Yeah, okay, physical, that's close rigor. enough for government work. A, a better answer is, well, 9-11 played a big role in this. I was an ex in high school. I started thinking about, uh, you know, uh, serving the country. I had a friend who went to West Point. He was really influential, and he encouraged me to visit him there. Uh, it was also a, 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 an instructor at my high school who said I should look at it. A key part of the decision was my visit where I met some other people, blah, blah, blah. And then the decision came down to, uh, and, and the fact that uh, it was, uh, I don't know if this is true, you know, the fact that, you know, that doesn't cost anything was a decision given my family situation. Uh, so it, there were a number of things. 
So basically, it comes down to, to, to telling your personal story and telling it in a way that has enough detail and examples in it that makes it compelling for someone as opposed to just top line, you know? Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's the real um, lesson here. And then, and then saying that with more conviction, you know? I mean, yeah, right here, you were simply, you know, trying to draw from what Sandy's telling you. Uh, yeah. so okay, let's, let's move on, we got it. Okay, so there, there's a whole suite of questions. What, what, what was unexpected when you got there? That's one of their favorite questions. The, uh, just how rigorous the, um, the academics was going to be. So um, I thought that I had prepared very well uh, for the academic rigors, um, but the physical and the military training that goes along with it is very, you know, it takes a lot of time away from being able to study. Um, so prioritizing my time to make sure that I'm able to study while also meeting my Yeah, you're, you're changing your answer and you're drifting. So the answer you're coming to was, you, you know, you've got to manage a lot of things there. Uh, including a, a required X, Y, and Z. And that, so I, I knew that would happen, but then I didn't realize the academics were going to be as hard as they were. So managing the academics and these required things like A, B, C, and D, you really, uh, that, that, boy, I was pooped. Get it? Okay. What, what was uh, your favorite course? Um, it was um, International Political Economy. Um, honestly, so we you had. Sound a, like, you sound like you regret. You know, I hate to say this, but it was. <laughs> well, I didn't think it was going to be my favorite. That was the thing. So um, it, was, it was one of my required courses in my economics major, and uh -huh. uh, I was more interested in microeconomics um, and going into uh, that route. But um, international political economy was a required class, and I went in there, and the discussions that we had um, opened my mind up to more different types of economic thought, so. You're still being grudging and giving out information. We're not, you're, you're not, uh, you sound like you're a captured spy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all on your side, man. We're all in the same country here. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe uh, I, I'm trying not to drone on too long, I guess. So I'm trying to it's not, parse it's not my the answers. It's, it's, so. the, it's the cadence of your speech. When, if they say, what's your favorite course? You should say, man, I really loved uh, political global economy. Uh, it, there were some great discussions about blah and blah at the time, whether or not we should institute tariffs. That was the year that X happened, you, you know, and it was just great conversations and rigorous uh, uh, methodology. And I got to see how, uh, you know, quantitative tools could be used uh, to explain things in a macro environment. I'm, I'm making all this Woo! up. I'm making all this up, but man. <laughs> <laughs> you get the picture? Good. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So another typical question is, this is a tough one. If you, if you had your West Point experience to do over again, what would you do differently? I don't think I would do anything different, honestly. Um, so all the different types of experiences that I had. Um, Mr. Byrne, what do you think of that answer? Yeah. Why? That's a good answer. I, you know, if you don't want to do anything differently, but then you immediately want to say why. Right. Uh, which I was getting to. Yes. Um, so that's a, that's a, okay. the answer's too long. So. That's, yeah. that's an okay answer. Uh, typical What's answer. What's a better answer? The better answer is, uh, I don't know about the availability, but spend more, if there was a possibility of studying abroad, people often give that as the answer. Uh, wish I had spent more time uh, on the uh, n non the physical. If you've got a high GPA, you go. You know, I wish I had spent more time in, uh, seeking opportunities that were more challenging, like uh, airborne or uh, whatever. Uh, Which I did. I did do that. Okay, but you, that you <laughs> so, so I did. A, I, so I did. Find, a, find that. I, right. Find I, find the thing like that you didn't do. All right, let's 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 keep okay. moving here. Okay. Uh, what, what what advice would you give somebody uh, going to West Point? So I I have actually given advice to uh, several candidates before, and um, the the advice that I always give is uh, don't underestimate the physical rigors of the program. 
Yeah. So I think everyone everyone always focuses on academics, the SAT scores, right? The GPA from high yeah, school. Yeah, is there something they can but, do the summer before? Is there is there like a training program that would help? There there absolutely is, right? So Good. as part All of right, the we got it. let's keep going here. Just wait. Let's about, Just wait. Yeah, let's talk about uh, your your army service. Uh, what frequently they, what they ask army guys like you or military guys like you is what what kind of leader are you this is a very hard question right so uh i have uh bottom line is uh a leader of character uh who emphasizes um empathetic leadership so well give me an example yeah. both of you said two different things leader of character and empathetic uh, give me an example of both of those. Right. Um, so, one of the uh, one of the responsibilities of being a, a commander is uh, balancing the requirements of both the army and the soldier. So, I'm responsible for taking care of the the soldier the, as an individual. Yeah. Hey, John, uh, how's well he doing? As... How's he doing on this answer? Yeah. <laughs> well. I, you know, I, I like the idea that he, he, uh, he values character and brings empathy to his dealings with uh, people. Uh, I mean, maybe he's a values-based leader uh, where integrity is extremely important to him. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Which, hey, hey, hey James, what you really need or is it you go, sure. I, like an ex uh, one example was when, when I helped uh, this guy who was facing this problem by saying this, that was being emotive, okay? Or that, that so that's, that's an example of being emotive leader. And then being a leader of character, you go, you know, one of the most difficult things I had to do, you know, they got like an honor system there uh, at West Point. Yes, yes. You gotta, so that often involves, you know, one of the most difficult things I had to do was some, someone came to me when I was an upperclassman and said, look, uh, I, I think I should turn in X for an honor violation. And I heard him out and went through the whole discussion and basically agreed with him. So that's, the, a, the, that's a yeah. character-based leadership example. I realize. No, to be specific. Yeah. Specific, yeah, but it always helps to be specific, right. What would your, uh, this is a, question I like to ask military guys, what, what would the guys under your command uh, say about you? Organized and efficient um, and hard but fair. Great dad answer, John. Okay, I, I would have liked to have heard the word um, inspired. Oh, uh, but maybe that it is. But you know, it's a, it's a tough I'm question to say so about I'm oneself. I'm going to say yeah, this so. about that answer. I didn't know uh, what is, they say. They said, oh, they I'm said they say, say, a, lot, I'm gonna say. say a lot of things. I'm going to tell you what that answer tells me. He can get stuff done. He's disciplined and he's respected. That's not what they're judging you on in the interview. Everybody can say stuff like that. I don't know. A lot of people can't get stuff done. And that's what, what all life is about. <laughs> Yeah, and that is a difficult question because I'm I'm saying stuff about myself, so it's um. Well, guess you what? Know. You're the one being interviewed. You get it. That's right. So you're your brand. Sure. You so are your say, brand. I I am an inspiring leader. I am the guy <laughs> at the top of the hill that guys want to follow. But again, their depth, you wouldn't. So. Here's what you do. You don't say it's about me. I th I think my guys would say this about me. So it's not you saying it. This gives you a chance to brag. That was the question. What, what do you think your men would say? That's what they asked this other uh, military. Yeah. So this gives you a chance to brag through them. Okay. Uh, but you still want to not brag too much. That's right. So. Uh, the, the answer would be, well, you know, I, I think they'd say a lot of things. I, I'd see, I, I think they'd say, uh, first of all, that I was, uh, had their interests at heart, okay? And, and I was able to make tough calls and I was able to support people. And then you just give, like those are things that you can give emotive, non-braggy examples of. 
Now you might say, well, gee, on, you know, on a list of marble plaques where they list leadership traits, you know, being emotive, you know, isn't as important as being of high character. It is for the ladies at Harvard Business School, you get it? <laughs> hey, how about one last question? What, 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 what do you, uh, give me a sketch out a career path after HBS. My short term goal is to become an uh, associate generalist consultant with McKinsey. Uh, work with them for two to three years in the um, practice that deals with um, turning around distressed uh, companies. Okay, John, and great daddy answer. Well, I, I think maybe a little too specific. Uh, what you want to do is open the doors a little bit more. You'd say, what really fascinates me are companies that are in distress uh, uh, that need help. And I'd love, love to be in a role at a, at, a, at a major consulting firm where I can fulfill that. that yeah, yeah. That's, you, go, you know, I, I'd like to be, a, right now my thinking is I, I'd like to be a consultant. I like doing a lot of different things. I like working with companies. Uh, I like using tools to support companies. I've spoken to consultants. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, uh, from West Point is now at uh, McKinsey. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress McKinsey. I mean, that's unless you think, you know, McKinsey is t totally different than, you know, BCG or Bain. I would just say, you know, general strategy consulting really interests me at a place, you know, like McKinsey, the, the firms you usually hear about, McKinsey, Bain, BCG. I've, I've got friends at those firms. And the reason you don't want to be that specific is because then you, you've just narrowed your choices and you've made them think, well, okay, if we can't get him a job at McKinsey, he's going to be disappointed. Uh, the reason you don't want to be that specific is because you sound uninformed and immature, okay? That, that's, that's why you don't want to be that specific. It sounds like you're a fanboy, not, not someone who's taking this seriously. <laughs> okay. So, hey, I, I think uh, this has been an incredible session, seriously, because I think, look, you are a powerful candidate. Uh, on paper, you have everything it takes to get into any one of these schools, including Stanford, which is, you know, the high, hardest to get into. Yeah, yeah. Percent acceptance rate. And what you need to really work on is your story. And, and you need to be um, come across as more casual and more informal in, in relating it and more specific uh, with stories that connect your personal life with the goals that you're seeking. Okay. Amen. I think that's the real takeaway. Hey, James, we beat you up a little here. <laughs> no, it's great. Cool. Yeah, yeah. You're coming from West Point. I think you, I think you've been through this cycle when you started. Yeah, this, this feels like a boot camp. <laughs> well, it's something I need, so right. much appreciated. But James, okay. you've got you've got what it takes. So you you just need to develop that or informal or more casual feel and get the, really specific, and you're going to be great. Hey, thank you. And for all of you out there, uh, thanks for watching. This is John Burden with Poets and Quants. It's Fridays with Sandy. Have a good weekend, everybody.